You know what? Jesus has been faithful. He has been faithful. He was faithful by going to the cross to die for us. He was faithful when I was not faithful. When I was doing my own thing, Jesus was always there. He was faithful, saying, come on, I got something better for you. And so I want to encourage you today with faith. I want your faith to be built up. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, the word of Christ, actually. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. Your faith comes by hearing the word of God. Your faith comes by hearing those or reading about those in the Bible that overcame their situations and circumstances. I am encouraged when Fred was sharing about this restaurant that somebody came up and says, we want to, somebody uh, uh, out of the blue just wanted to pay for all of your food, all of your meals. Isn't that awesome? So what the Bible says what God will do for one, he'll do for another. And so, you know, to be encouraged, to know that the Lord is faithful, and he'll continue to be faithful. Well, we're going to go into the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And again, the title of the message is Faith versus Fear. And I want faith to rise up within you and me today as we read the scripture. And, you know, as you know me, I read a lot of scripture. I read a lot of scripture. I read the story in context when I'm reading the scripture. And the thing about it is, don't get bored by hearing all this scripture being read, but sit back or read you along with me and receive the Holy Spirit ministering to you through his word. You know, when I'm reading scripture, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to me of how to apply it to my life. How to overcome when certain things come against me or come against us. And to know that if they did it in the Old Testament, we can do it in the New Testament. You know, the Old Testament is the foreshadowing of Christ. When you're reading the Old Testament, you see Jesus all in the Old Testament. He may not be mentioned by Jesus but you can see the foreshadowing of Jesus. You can see the example of Jesus. You can say, wow, look at what the Lord has done for them. So in Daniel chapter 3, verse 1, we're going to start there. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that it will accomplish its purpose. It's going out to do. I want to just stay out of the way, Holy Spirit, so that you will continue to have your way through your word. I thank you today there's going to be revelation, new revelation of your word. Encouragement to those who need encouraging. For those who need to have this stored away inside their spirit man so that we when something comes along the way down the road, that Holy Spirit, you'll remind us of what the Bible said about it, about what Jesus said about it, so that we can apply it to this situation or circumstance that we're going through right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So in Daniel chapter 3, verse 1, it says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. That's pretty tall, isn't it? 90 feet high and 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Now I want to skip down to verse 4. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, This is what you are commanded to do, O peoples, nations, and men of every language. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So they were commanded to worship this image. Now we're going to go down to verse 8. At the same time, uh, at this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. 
You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn and all those instruments must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the blazing furnace. But there's some Jews, there's always those people, isn't it? There's always the haters. There's always those who point to everybody else's problems and mistakes. Do you know anybody like that? Have you ever come across some people like that? They won't mind their own business. They just get into your business. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not perfect, but I'm on my way. It's a process. I don't need somebody to get in my business. I need the Lord to get in my business and show me what needs to happen. Are you with me this morning? So they said, but there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, O king. And you know, they're haters in the, pro in the sense that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been promoted to a position. And they were jealous of them. And so they were telling on them. And it says here, they pay no attention to you, O king. They never, they neither, they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought to the for, uh, before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn and all those instruments, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. <laughs> but if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then... What God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Now, I want to just stop there right now. It's just like the enemy to torment you, to say, you know what? Your God ain't going to do this. Your God isn't going to heal your body. Your God isn't going to provide for you. Your God isn't going to protect you. Your God isn't going to do all the things. See, that's the devil who says, you know, and that's where he gets in your mind. And he says, run it's not going to work. Pastor Sandy, you might as well give up because you've been at this for so long. And, and what have you seen? And I know both of you and Doris have seen a lot of what God has done. And you've shared what God has done in your life over and over, even in your golden years, and how the Lord has provided and supplied all your needs and had made a way where there seems to be no way. See, I can hear their testimony say, Praise the Lord. What I'm going through, God is going to work on my behalf too because he's worked on their behalf. Can you say amen? I'm here to encourage you and build you up to have faith in God and not lose your faith. And as we're reading the story, as the story's been told, King Nebuchadnezzar tells these three, Hebrews, he tells these three that if you don't bow down to my God and this image I have put here, you're going to be thrown into the fire. And he says, so I'm going to give you one more chance. It's just like the devil to say, I'm going to give you one more chance. And if you don't do this, then what God can rescue you from? From this, well, I know what God can rescue. His name is Jesus Christ. He rescued me out of my pit. He rescued me out of death. He rescued me out of all kinds of things. And so what God has done before, he'll do again. Can you say amen? I want to encourage somebody today. God has worked in your life more than you would ever know. Sometimes I, I look back and I say, oh, yeah, even in my kind of golden years, they're getting golden. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I can, I'll be reminded, the Lord will remind me of what he has already done in my life, how he's healed my body, how he's provided for me. And so whatever I'm going through right now, I can say my trust is in the Lord because he has done great things already. And the Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did yesterday, he'll do today and forever. Can you say amen? Because he has already provided. He has already supplied. He's already healed. It says, by his stripes, 
I have been made whole. You have been made whole. By the stripes he took upon his back all those years ago, you were healed. So what do I do now? I receive by faith my healing. I receive by faith my provision. I receive by faith my protection. You know, it said that they, before he went to the cross, they, they put this crown of thorns on him, and, and they bowed down, and they mocked him, and they beat him, and they punched him, and they spit on him. The Lord, the Lord of creation, they mocked him. And the meaning of this is that he took our shame upon him. So when somebody comes up to you and wants to shame you, you can say, Jesus already took care of it. I'm not going to live under shame and condemnation and all these things because Jesus took care of it all these years. If you don't like me, I don't know what to say. I'm not here to cause you to hate me, but if you hate me, that's between you and God. Can you say amen? I got to keep on keeping on. I got to keep on doing what the Lord told me to do. We got to keep on doing what the Lord has told us to do. We got to keep on reading the scripture and applying the word of God to it. We got to keep our heads up. Keep on moving ahead. Keep on to, to, to the promised land. Through the promised land. Kicking out giants and dispossessing all nations. Because Jesus says, i have given you the land. Can you say amen? Let's go on a little bit farther. He says, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Listen to what they say in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> I can just hear him, O Nebuchadnezzar, O you, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. It says, if we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. So what are they speaking with? They're speaking with faith, aren't they? Faith. They're saying, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, oh, you silly person, silly rabbit, so to speak. If you throw us into the fire, our God will rescue us. Do you know that your God is rescuing you out of the fire, out of circumstances, out of situations? Well, you know what? This world, this nation's a mess, and people are hating, and this and that. Well, you know what? That's their thing. You do the right thing. You be above and not beneath. You say, you know what, Lord? My trust is in you. You're the shield about me. You go before me, and you make a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you, Jesus. And now... Listen to the rest of this, and I want to put this in perspective. In verse 18, it's always um, presented as maybe they don't have the faith, but that's not what it means. It says, but even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. And what they're saying, let's just say, they're saying, they're saying, let's just say that our God doesn't rescue. And they're not saying he isn't going to or whether they're wondering he's going to, because they have already said he's going to rescue us. I want to speak into your spirit, man, right now. Your God is rescuing you. Your God is providing for you. Your God is healing your body. Your God is making a way where there seems to be no way. And I want to just make this clear. Your God is named Jesus. No other God, no little crystal, no little statue, none of that. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is working on your behalf and my behalf. Can you say amen? So they say, just let's say if he does it. We want you to know, King Nebuchadnezzar, we're not going to worship that idol or any other gods. That is ridiculous. No telling what it looked like. No telling what, you know, they want, all the people were bowing down, left and right, they were bowing down to this golden image because they were afraid to be thrown into the fire. Let's go on to the rest of the story. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude toward them changed. See, what is the deal with his attitude that changed? He had promoted them 
because Daniel was promoted. And so the three of them were promoted by Nebuchadnezzar. But because they disobeyed him, his attitude toward them changed. It says, he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. Not only were they going to be thrown into the furnace, but the fire was heated up seven times hotter than before. Now, I want you to hear the word of the Lord this morning. The enemy is mad at you. The enemy sees God working on your behalf. The enemy has noticed that, wait a second, there is potential in you, that God is going to do something spectacular in you and through you, and the devil is nervous because you're getting revelation of the Word of God, and he's pulling out the big guns, and he's doing all these crazy things for you to just, to just, to, just to give it up. But I'm here to tell you, now is not the time to throw in the towel. Now is the time to stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord. So the strongest soldiers, the fire would have been thrown, uh, it is heated up seven times. So it says in verse 21, so these men wearing their robes, trousers, uh, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. Listen, the king commanded was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, that, and these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. See what the enemy was doing. That even the soldiers, the strongest soldiers, were consumed by the fire. Let's go on. It's good news. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire. Who do you think the fourth one was? Jesus. Jesus was in the fire. Jesus is in your fire. Jesus is with you in your situation and circumstance. Jesus is in your uh, uh, announcement from the doctor that you have been diagnosed with whatever. But Jesus, the healer, is with you. Jesus lives with you. Jesus, the healer, is inside you. You don't have to be afraid. Just accept what he's provided for you with. Ooh, praise God. Certainly, O king, he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unarmed, and the fourth one looks like a son of the gods. Well, he was a son of man, son of God. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the off opening in the, of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. Well, you know what? It made a believer out of him, didn't it? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. Are we the servants of the Most High God? We are the servants of the Most High God. He said, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out to the fire. And the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw the fire. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair uh, of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. I'm going to say hallelujah. I just got to take a minute and praise the Lord. I just got to thank the Lord how he has brought me out, how he's brought you out. And as he brought them out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Who praise God. But the soldiers that threw them in were consumed by the fire and died. But the three... Did not. Whether the enemy is trying to cause the fire to become hotter in your life, just know that it will not consume you. Jesus is in the fire with you. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command 
and were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. See, you know how we're going to affect the world? How we're going to make a difference in the world? Is when we show them that our God is able to bring us through. Our God is able to heal our bodies. Our God is able to rescue us. Our God is bigger than any other gods in this world. Any other person or anybody in position or leadership or whatever it is. Our God is above and beyond anything that we could ever imagine. Can you say amen? Our God is a big God, isn't he? So I'm here today to encourage you and to build your faith. No matter what you're going through, your God will bring you through. Don't give up. Can you say amen? Well, I know somebody that needs Jesus will pray for them and stand in the gap for them, knowing that, Lord, you're going to make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm standing in the gap for them. I'm believing that you're moving on their behalf. You're going to bring them through. I thank you, Lord. The doctor said, my father, this, but I thank you, Jesus. You said that by your stripes, he's been made whole, and I'm believing for his healing. Tony, I'm declaring over your body right now, the devil is alive. You are the living temple of the Holy Spirit. What the enemy is doing to attack your body, I declare right now, Jesus lives inside you. There's resurrection power in your body. I'm telling you right now, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells within each and every one of us. He is causing a resurrection power to rise up within us. Can you say hallelujah, praise the Lord? The resurrection power is in you, Mike. The resurrection power is in you, Jimmy. And each one listening to me right now, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is inside us. He raised Christ from the the dead he's raising you up right now in the name of Jesus nobody but nobody can keep you from the blessing of the Lord only you can keep yourself from the blessing of the Lord by not believing and trusting in the Lord can you say amen here's the definition of faith faith is belief and trust in and loyalty to God and the loyalty of God that's faith in Hebrews 11.1, 1, you can write this down. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. When you get the title deed of your house, what is it? It's paid in full. You know, last year, we got our title deed because our property is paid in full. Can you say amen? All these years of paying on it, finally it is paid off, and it's our property. Praise the Lord. The same with your faith. Whatever you're believing God for, faith is the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of the reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Just because I can't see it, or you can't see it, or you can't taste it, you can't hear it, you cannot feel it, doesn't mean it ain't here. You know, faith is the title deed. So when the Lord has put on my heart or put on your heart to believe and stand for something, just because you don't see it in the natural sense, it's in the spirit realm, but we need to pray it out of the spirit realm into the natural realm. Can you say amen? We need it to happen out here. We thank you, Lord, it's there, but we need to come out here into the natural. I'm believing for your healing, Edward, that it's manifesting from the spirit realm of when Jesus said, by his stripes, you have been made whole. But I thank you, Lord, that it's manifesting in his body right now in Jesus' name. Are you with me this morning? We're building up our faith. And, and, and to know that, you know what, the devil wants you to give up. And now it's not the time to give up. You've got to keep on going. Hallelujah. Fear... And the definition of fear is an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation of danger. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because the devil planted a seed, you're going to lose everything. Fear rises up because you're afraid that you won't have anything. Or whatever it is, that's what fear is. 
You know, the devil is trying to cause you to be afraid. Oh, your child this or that or whatever it is. Don't speak out what you're afraid of and let you go, I thank you, Jesus. You got it taken all. You got it all taken care of. The devil is trying to kill my kid, but Jesus, you are protecting my kid. Can you say amen? You got to, the main thing is you got to declare the word of the Lord. Don't declare that your kid's going to die. Declare that the Lord is saved saving your kid or whatever. I'm just giving you an example. Be careful what you say. There are power in our words. The tongue has the power of life or death, blessings or curses. So be careful what you say. Don't say things that you shouldn't say. And if you do say something, you need to go right behind it. Automatically say, I repent for saying it. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry. You know, and just declare the truth over it. Can you say amen? Write this down in 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? A spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Because that's what the Word of God says. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but... Do you hear what I'm saying? But He didn't give us a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. That's of the devil. But He says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Say power. Say, I got the power. Say, I got power. It says, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Because that's where the enemy attacks, doesn't he? In your mind. But I have not been given a spirit. You have not been given the spirit of fear, but a power, love, love. It says, don't overcome evil with evil, but of good, the Bible says. And of a sound mind. You can write this down in Isaiah 41.10. Fear not. Say, fear not. Say, I'm not afraid. Sometimes you got to say it by faith, don't you? And sometimes it's scary. But you got to speak faith. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Who praise God. And where's Jesus seated? At the right hand of God. So in the Old Testament, he's, he's speaking to the Israelites. He's speaking to Israel. Don't worry, I got your back. He says, I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jesus is the righteousness of God. He's in the right standing. He's on the right hand of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. And I got Jesus. You got Jesus in you. So we've got the right. We're the righteousness of God. You know what? He's working on your behalf. He's working on our behalf. He's got our back. He goes before us. He's making a way. I'm here to, to encourage you. This week, we need to stop thinking about defeat and begin to think about victory, victory, victory. Before we leave today, we need to get in and say, I am victorious. I am victorious now, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. I am victorious. You are victorious. We are victorious. We're going to stop believing the lies of the enemy and begin to stand on the truth of God and operate in that truth. Can you say amen? Go to Matthew chapter 14. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Matthew 14, verse 22. It says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him so to the other side. While he, was, while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. 
It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, hear what I'm saying? Jesus immediately said to them, Jesus is immediately telling us, fear not. Don't be afraid. He says, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the waters. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So he's saying, Peter, you know, Peter, he says, If it's you, Lord, summon me to come out. Jesus said, Come. He began to walk on the water. It says he began to walk on water. He was walking on water. He was doing something that seemed impossible. You, the Lord is summoning you. The Lord is calling you to do something that seems impossible. To believe him for it. And he will take care of you. You'll walk on water. You'll do what God has promised you. You'll, he'll, he's promised. I'm here to stir us up today. He's giving you promises and you have forgotten about them. Or you have, have gone to a place and say, you don't think it will happen, but I'm here to encourage you. Keep on believing him. And what happened with Peter? When he got his eyes off of Jesus, here's a word for somebody. One, you get your eyes off of Jesus, you get to begin to look on your circumstances and situations, and you begin to sink. But he cried out to Jesus. While you might be sinking, cry out to Jesus and he'll pull you up and say, come on, Peter, keep on walking in water. Keep on walking on the water. Keep on walking on the water. Keep on walking. So when you lose your faith or your faith gets to dwindling, cry out to Jesus and he will raise you up and remind you. And you, guess what? you got the Holy Spirit in you. He reminds you of everything Jesus has told you. Can you say amen? Go to Psalms 121. We're going to close with that. Psalms 121. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 121, verse 1. You know, you have to understand, in the old days, remember they would talk about high places. They would have these um, places of worshiping idols, and sometimes they would engrave their gods on the side of the hill and all this stuff, and here the psalmist is saying, Psalms 121, it says, verse 1, it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And you know what I get out of that? He, the, the, the writer is saying, I look above anything that is not of God. I look above the idols. I look above whatever's going on in the world and in our nation and all these crazy things. I look above all of that to the Lord because He's our provider. He's our supplier. He is the one who makes the way where there seems to be. No. I gotta drown out the chatter. I gotta drown out and I've gotta close my eyes to those things that are a distraction to me. And I gotta open my eyes to the Lord and focus on the Lord because the Lord is the one who's bringing us along the way. He's the one that's making a way where there seems to be no way. He says, I lifted my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Well, the doctor says I'm going to die. Well, I don't look to the doctor for the answer. I thank God for the doctors and the medicine and all those things. But my healer, his name is Jesus Christ. I look to him. I mean, the doctors may say I might be dying, but my Lord and Savior says I'm living, I'm alive, and, I'm, and I provided healing for your body. I thank you, Jesus. I'm alive and I'm healed. And I thank you, Lord, that the rest of my 
life. I'm going to enjoy my life because Jesus, you said you came to give me life and life more abundantly. That I will enjoy my life and to the fullest. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. When I go to heaven, I just want to wake up in heaven. How about you? I want to just wake up and I'm in heaven. Thank you, Lord. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will no, neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. Can you say amen? That's good, isn't it? And the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. For now and forever. He's taking care of you and me. He's watching over us. He has charged His angels to watch over us. He is taking care of you. He's brought you this far. He'll take you all the way. I pray a stirring within you. I pray a, a fresh anointing, a fresh love for Jesus to come upon us that even if we've been doing this for a long time I thank you for a freshness that will rise up within us to remember how good the Lord is to us he is good he is good not that he has been good we know he has been good but he keeps on being good to us he's good to you he's good to me he's good to us he's good we serve a good God can you say amen the Bible says therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You want to condemn me? Then you know who you're fighting against? You're fighting against Father the Son, Father the uh, Father, Heavenly Father, the Father, God of Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all three of them. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I got you inside me. When you fight against me, you're fighting against them. And if people fight against you, they're fighting against him. So I'm here to encourage you today, faith. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but he's giving you faith, faith, faith. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? He told the woman, it's your faith that has healed you. She says, if I could just touch Jesus, I shall be made whole. You know what? And it says her faith has made her whole. It's your faith that's getting you through. It's your faith that's getting you promoted. It's your faith that's causing healing to manifest. It's your faith that's causing financial blessing. It's your faith of protection of the Lord. Can you say amen? So faith versus fear. Why waste time in fear and put all your attention in faith? It says that God will fight our battle. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you today. He is the way maker. Well, this morning, before we leave, or before we say goodbye to those watching today, I want to encourage you, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and today you want to ask Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, today's your day. I'm Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, everybody. What a great opportunity on Father's Day to accept Jesus, His Son, as your Lord and Savior. Today be your day to remember. Oh yeah, on Father's Day in 2023, I gave my heart to the Lord, or I rededicated my heart to the Jesus. Well, if that's you today, would you pray with me? Would you pray, Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. Today, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior forever. Amen. If you prayed that, you're saved. The process has begun. Well, if you need healing today, you need a breakthrough today, you need a touch of the Lord today, lift up your hands this morning. Whatever it is the Lord wants to 
Maybe you know somebody that needs a touch. Maybe you know somebody needs a breakthrough. Lift them up today to the Lord. Lord, right now, I thank you that you are the Lord of the breakthrough. That you are causing a breakthrough in each one's lives, in each person that they may know. I thank you, Lord, right now as we stand in the gap for other people, people that need you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you're touching their hearts. You're giving them a heart of flesh from a heart of stone to hear your voice and accept the word of the Lord. Today, I thank you that you provided healing for our bodies, healing for our minds, healing for our emotions. Whatever the need is, I thank you, Jesus, you're taking care of it. This is for all your glory. It's for the, to show the world we serve a good and living God who takes care of his children. Today, I thank you that breakthrough has begun for each and every one. Believe in God for this breakthrough and healing in Jesus' mighty name. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Before we go, I want to invite you today, those who are watching, we, you can give into this ministry. You can sow into this ministry. We have a, a, a site that you can text. You can dial 972-779-6151 and text FAITH. Text FAITH and it'll give you instructions on how to sow into this ministry. We want to do greater things. We want to share the good news throughout the world. We want to see God move in each one's lives. We want to see people who have been hurt by the church, hurt by religious people, come back to Jesus. We want to share the love of Christ, the true love of Christ, that all people, Jesus loves everybody. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Help us spread the gospel. So into this ministry, that is an invitation. I pray that you would sow in and pray for this ministry so that we can go throughout the world with the good news and the gospel. I speak encouragement. Share this program with people that you know. Share the YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Uh, share Facebook. Let other people know that we're here and, and, and be a part of this move of God. God bless you. See you next week. Praise God. Will you give God a big clap offering?